that's me a bleeding socket in my mouth. Bleeding after a dental extraction is a really common problem, especially for patients who can't coagulate well, such as alcoholics, uh, patients with liver failure, patients on Coumadin, and so forth. The sickest ones always seem to be the patients who are least compliant with their dental follow-up and the most likely to leave AMA, even though a lot of these patients um, require blood transfusions. First, keep in mind that any dental procedure you do has to be done on a patient with an intact gag <laughs> reflex. A lot of these patients have been coughing up grapefruit-sized blood clots for days and days without aspirating, but as you know, it is not unheard of for a patient to decide to down a fifth of vodka and take three days' worth of methadone uh, right before heading over to the ER. Let's start with the easiest tricks and then move on to the uh, more complicated ones. First, try having the patient just bite down on a piece of gauze. They've got to bite down hard for about 15 or 20 minutes. And if the patient can handle the nasty taste, I like to saturate the gauze in some 1% lidocaine with epi, which gives both um, topical anesthesia and also has some uh, vasoconstriction uh, involved. Unfortunately, I all too often come back to check on the patient after five minutes and find them talking on their cell phone or eating a bag of razor-sharp Fritos with a bloody piece of gauze hanging off of their chin. If the gauze trick doesn't work, you can try having the patient bite down on a tea bag. Get your minds out of the gutter. I mean a real tea bag. Again, for 15 or 20 minutes, you can add some lidocaine with epi too. The reason this works is the tannic acids of black tea have a pro-coagulant effect. Green tea and crunchy hippie herbal teas won't work, so you can save that bag of chamomile bean curd empowerment yoga collective blend for after work. If the patient is still bleeding, you can try to suture in a piece of gel foam uh, using an absorbable suture like Chromic can't really show you this here because my camera won't fit in my mouth. Uh, it's a little tricky technically and the patient has to be very cooperative for it to work. Do not use a piece of gauze or other non-absorbable material because if the patient aspirates it and it gets stuck in their lung, it's going to stay there until somebody else takes it out, probably the medical examiner. If you can't suture the gel foam in place, take a little piece of it and saturate it with some phenylephrine nasal spray drops. Then drape it over a swab and trim off the excess and place it into the socket and have the patient hold pressure. You get a lot more direct pressure with this method and the phenylephrine will constrict the vessels. The disadvantage is that the gel foam isn't sutured in place but if it does fall out, it's no more dangerous than any other type of blood clot that the patient has already been coughing up for days and days. This last trick I've used only once on a patient who had multiple coagulopathies, who was very anemic after days of bleeding, who had cardiac disease, and who was incredibly non-compliant, adamantly refusing admission, refusing to wait for ENT consult, and had failed every other treatment so far. Uh, what I did with her is I gave her a dental block, then sucked out as much of the clot as I could with a mini suction, broke off the tip of a silver nitrate stick, and held it in the socket for about a minute. It worked when nothing else did. However, keep in mind that putting silver nitrate next to alveolar bone probably isn't very good for it, and if the patient somehow aspirates or swallows that silver nitrate tip, they will be in a world of trouble, namely death. Therefore, this approach should only be used when the patient is going to have a very bad outcome otherwise and there is no other option available.